Hey, everybody. Welcome back to In Orbit. I'm your operator, Sam Hebda, and I'm in the studio today with Jerry Lee. He is the Chief Operating Manager at Juan Salting, as well as the Manager of Product Strategy and Analytics at Lucid. Hey, Jerry. Welcome to the studio, man. Sam, so privileged and honored to be here. So excited to talk with you. Thanks for having me. Likewise, I'm, I'm excited to get into it and hear about your story. Why don't you uh, go ahead and tell our listeners what Juan Salting is all about? Sure. So Juan Salting's mission is to turn underdogs into winners. I and love to most, Yeah, to most, they might think buzzwords. But for us, what that means is bridging the opportunity gap between those who come from non-traditional backgrounds and those who come from privileged backgrounds, right? What we noticed is that people who come from non-target schools, the non-Harvards, the, the non-MITs of the world, right? It's hard for those people to get into the Googles, the Facebooks right. of the world. Right. So we do what we can to bridge that gap through events, through job search strategies, through one-on-one -on -one coaching, and we're launching so many different initiatives for the next year. And we're hoping that this blurred line between those who come from privileged backgrounds and non-traditional backgrounds are is gone. That's awesome. And I, you, you guys have turned thousands of underdogs into winners already, right? Yeah, it's, yeah. it's been a crazy journey and it's really hard to quantify, but I think the number that we've always ranged was about like tens of thousands. Tens of thousands, like 80,000, 100,000. <laughs> yeah. tens and tens of thousands yeah no so you guys deliver on that you know it's more than just buzzwords so what where did that catchphrase or i guess i should say tagline mission statement where'd that come from you know that's something that the ceo uh jonathan created uh i mean both he and i come from non-target schools uh we're both from immigrant backgrounds and i come from a lo first gen low-income household as well so it's we've always been around the underdog story mentality and that's who we really grew up with. But now being on the opposite side where I started my career at Google for a number of years, I was a first intern there from my alma mater. My alma mater has been around for a hundred years. What was your alma mater? Babson College. Babson, I've never heard of it. Yeah, it's small <laughs> Northeast College, uh, okay. small business school. But nevertheless, it's amazing for us to, and so humbling to be on the opposite side of the coin mm -hmm. and be in positions that Jonathan and I dreamt about. And so now we're doing all we can being in this pr place of privilege to help others do the same. I love it. And I talked to Jonathan. He is just on fire for helping people, man. That's right. The guy is just a machine. I he love really him. Is. So like that kind of passion for helping people. And, and he was talking about how it, it all started when he was working for Google. When did it all sort of start for you? For me, it started back in college. Yeah. Uh, I got into college and so a little bit of background. So my college, Babson, is a private school, private mm -hmm. business school. Uh, when I started, I was surrounded by kids who came from middle, upper, 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 upper backgrounds, right? right? And I soon began to realize that I was so far behind. So many of these other students knew business terms. They had, they were involved in their family business. Mm -hmm. Their parents were, you know, directors or managing directors at big tech companies or at McKinsey, at Goldman, or all the brand name companies. And here I am trying to figure out yeah. what do these companies even do? Right. 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 So for me, I've always felt like the underdog and just trying to figure out what all this stuff is, mm -hmm. but the more I began to learn, the more I began to realize this actually isn't as hard as I thought it to be. Mm -hmm. And once you make that realization, then you suddenly realize, well, okay, if this starts, if this is working for me, why aren't other people doing it? Right? Yeah. Understanding that it's super easy. And so then that started getting me more involved with helping uh, my friends back in college and helping them get into their dream careers. Uh, I was almost known as like the professional development guy. And nice. like, I would always do like power hour yeah. with my friends uh, where we would invite them over. We'd have food and we'd just like do interview prep with each other, resume, <laughs> apply to jobs. Man, where were you when I needed to get into college? That's what I keep thinking. 
<laughs> that's what yeah. I keep thinking. Or I need I to mean, get into uh, get a job after college, man. I, I looked so long, went to career fairs. Yeah, you man, you it's know, not but easy. It's and not easy. Why do you think that is? It, aside from the disparity in you know background, what what do you think people are missing? I think the biggest thing that they're missing missing is just the right tools and education yeah. right i mm-hmm. think when you think about the average college experience uh, at least for mine you have a career center that's severely understaffed mm-hmm. they're trying their best to make sure they provide you with opportunities but what if you you don't really go to those opportunities what if you don't read the flyers that they have how do you get educated right and for most freshmen and sophomores in college the first thing that they the first thing they don't think about is I can't wait to land my full-time job. Right. Right. They're thinking about, well, how do I get beer money for the weekend? How do I get Mm -hmm. A's in all my classes? How do I think about my friends and what I want to do for spring break? Right. No one rarely thinks about perfect. Can't wait to land something that I'm going to get in four years. Yeah. Yeah. And so then the question becomes, well, if the career centers aren't providing the right level of opportunities and education for those people who need it the most, then who will? No one. That's where one Sultan Sultan. fits in, I think. Yeah, exactly. that's exactly it. Yeah. And so that's really our, our, our dream and our goal that for those people who do feel like they, who do come from non-traditional backgrounds, who don't feel like they have the right level of resources, we hope to be everything that we wish we had when we were in college. That is awesome. Yeah, I think like you, I feel so blessed and extremely blessed to be in the position I am now, especially in COVID, just working yeah. from home. I get to spend all the time with my wife and my little girl. She's yeah. four months old. I have to brag whenever she comes up, but like she, she is the most adorable. And <laughs> that all came from, you know, meeting meeting Sonny Sue, who's the Paradigm, uh, Paradigm founder. Wow. And he sort of gave me that opportunity to do something that I was passionate about, which a lot of people don't find. Yeah. And I know like for you, for you and Jonathan, you guys found that in helping other people succeed, helping them find their, their dream job. Right. But how did that become your business? Like when did it become, go from being a side hobby with you guys in the college dorms to being something that you considered as a full-time employment? Such a good question. And we honestly just stumbled upon it. It was something that, so Jonathan and I, the way that we met, we actually met on LinkedIn, which is the craziest and funniest thing. Yeah. And now we're like, Hey man, I met my wife on Facebook. So (laughs) there you go. All right. So, and and you're right. If you co-found something, you're basically family, right? So that's that's exactly (laughs) it. Yeah. He's like my, uh, annoying girlfriend that I wish I never had. (laughs) Yes. But you know, um, for us, it, we first started off just doing workshops and posting on LinkedIn, where we were just posting some of our career advice, things that we've learned in our careers to help others. But sooner and rather than later, people started coming to us and saying, hey, well, I'd love for you to come to my school. Hey, I'd love for you to come to my organization. Then they start told other people about it. Then they come back, more people come to us and be like, oh my gosh, I'd love for you guys to speak at our hackathon. I'd love for you guys to do X, Y, Z. And on top of that, we'd also have people being like, love what you do. How can I get a personalized service from you guys? Yeah. Right. Like, how can I work with you one-on-one? And we'd be like, yeah, sure. We do it for free. Like, I, we love this stuff. And then sooner or later, we began to realize, well, we can't help 1,500 people. Mm-hmm. I remember one time I opened up my calendar and I allowed for people to book 30-minute sessions. And I opened up my calendar for three months. It got filled in five minutes. Right. No way crazy and then i was like oh my gosh well i'm gonna and then next year when i did it i did 15 minute slots instead of 30 minutes and i did four months five minutes again Uh, wow and i'm like oh my gosh and then it was insane (laughs) and then we started a challenge on linkedin where we challenged other professionals to open up their calendars Mm -hmm. right and we had i think of and this is at the start of covid right so People are losing their jobs. People who have jobs have more time because they no longer have to commute, right? And they're adjusting to this new norm. Then you start to connect them, connect those two together. Yeah. So that's one of the things that we that we've done, but also just goes to show like there was a need, we addressed it, and as soon as more we there was a load that we just couldn't handle, we prioritized it by share uh, by starting a business out of it. 
you go into a little bit more detail right there. So you made it sound so easy, but for some of our viewers and listeners, like they have, <laughs> they're, they're a bunch of founders or creatives, entrepreneurs who are trying to get started with their own passion, their own, their own business. And, mm -hmm. you know, there's another step or a few steps in there in terms of strategic design. And how did that come into play? To be honest, I wish I had a, a sexy structured answer. And I wish I had a, you know, Sam, we, 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 we spent six hours together in a coffee shop and we had this miracle business plan, but to be honest, even still today, we're, we're figuring it out. Oh uh, yeah. But you know, do you wish you had done that beforehand before it exploded? Cause you guys have <laughs> thousands and thousands of people on board with this idea now, right? Yeah. You know, that, that's, that's something that it, what's so funny about what you just brought up is that Jonathan is always a guy to be like, Jerry, I have this idea. Let's do this tomorrow. Yeah. Right. And I'm always a guy to be like, all right, well, let's figure out well, what is the bigger picture? What are we trying to, what are we trying to run to? How does your idea fit into what we're trying to run to? Right. And half the times we'll be like, actually it does fit in. Uh -huh. But the other half of the time we'll be like, actually it doesn't fit in. So let's just kill it. Or maybe put mm -hmm. it on the shelf. An example of this is we wrote a book on career development. Right. But we try to figure out like, well, how does this fit into our menu of offerings to people who want to work with us? Should they get a book? Should they come to a workshop? Should we take an online course? Should they take our services? Like, we don't want to get to the point. That's, that's an example of like mm -hmm. where we had to put on our strategic brain versus not. I'd say the, at starting it, we did minimal amount of strategy. We did a little bit, but not as much, but now we're very intentional about where we allocate our time, how much we allocate our time to, and when we need to bring people in to help us achieve those goals. Yeah. Um, like right I'm, now, whatever. Management's pretty tough when you're in your Time team. management's yeah. so, so important. And right now we're focusing on partnerships and scalability of our business, right? Because cool. if yeah. you can knock those two things out, then suddenly we have a well-oiled machine that frees up so much of our time. And now we can expect, take all that time and focus it elsewhere. Yeah, that's what we, that's what we try to do for businesses in the, the vortex. We have mm -hmm. services like that, that we help small businesses, ventures, startups that are trying like to that. structure, you know, so that when they do hit success, like you guys, they can just scale instantly. So that's right. I love that, that. Yeah. <laughs> I think that um, time management, like you said, as you get bigger and bigger, just becomes multiplied. So how, for you personally, Jerry, like what's your day look like when you wake up in the morning? Man, on average, my day looks like roughly about eight, seven, six hours of meetings. I'll try to fit in some time to play some mobile games with my girlfriend throughout the day. And at nighttime is really where I get a lot of my stuff done. Sometimes I'll have three, four, five hour sprints at night where I'm just grinding and getting work done. Yeah. And I've realized that's what's most helpful for me. Mm -hmm. um, but also what I always think about in the mornings is, well, what do we need done by the by within the next week? That's the first question I always open up my day, um, open up my day with, because that helps me orient, well, are there people that I should message? Are there reminders that I should send out? Are there things that I should do that will help my, help make my life easier five days from now than, than if I were to just wait off to the last minute? So those are some of the things that I think about. But by and large, honestly, a lot of it is meetings and project and work at night. Have you found anything that doing right at the beginning of the day really sets you off on a good path? So recently, I worked with a therapist to help my anxiety, right? And one of the things that I found about working with this therapist is she mentioned that you should have a routine that starts off your day in, in a good mood, right? For some people that's making their bed because they feel like they've yeah. accomplished something. For some people it's listening to music, for others it's meditating, working out. For me, it's taking a walk outside. Oh, really? It's the, yeah, it's the weirdest You're thing. You're a nature guy, I, I love it. It's the most therapeutic thing and it, for some reason, it reminds me of my childhood because I would always walk to school, right? Both my parents working and uh, I also live close to school. So it just made sense. So it would always just bring me back to those memories. I'd play music and just walk. I don't even, I really, I probably walk around in circles <laughs> half the time, <laughs> but I, whenever I can and, I, yeah. it, and when I wake early enough, I try to take walks because to me, that's just so therapeutic mm -hmm. and just starts my energy off with the with the right vibes for sure no i love 
I love walking as well. I do that before I, I do interviews every time. Yeah. Except for today, this one in particular, because baby just needed help. Oh, uh, man. Yeah, no, I get that. And in the morning, especially like uh, going for a walk can be really refreshing. I was going to mm-hmm. ask you about like, in terms of, you said you have a girlfriend and I know that I do. being a founder, being a co-founder is extremely straining. It's a, it's a huge time commitment. Like, how do you make that work? I try to set those expectations much earlier on and uh, just say, hey, that there are going to be days when I'm super busy and things are going to be crazy. But there's also days where I'm just going to spend time with you. Yeah. You know, and she's got to be took pretty a, understanding. Uh, yeah. It took yeah. a lot of back and forth. And I think we're still trying to figure it out because there are days when she'd be like, hey, you're not listening to me as I'm in a call or I'm trying to send out an email. And it's that balance is always tough to strike. But I think it's, being with the right person that's helped me realize like, Hey, well, have my, my current priorities are what it is and finding the right people to help you accelerate and achieve your goals. Understanding your priorities is also really important. So for me, that's, that's what I found to be most helpful. Just Mm -hmm. talking, communicating, setting the right level of expectations. Yeah. A lot of communication, right? Communication is key. Oh man. (laughs) I got married last year and it's just been an incredible ride. I got married, had a kid, and it's just been, you know, step after step. I feel like I'm growing in leaps and bounds this year. COVID, yeah. man. Who would have known? Tough. It's tough. Who known? Yeah. Although people like you, people like you and people like me who are ready for the online world to explode, we've done well in COVID. And I think a lot of the people in our in our audience have done really well because they're the determined, driven ones who took advantage of the change in scenery, the change in That's circumstance. Right. Yeah, make your own dreams come true. Don't wait for anybody to give you a job. How does that, I'm curious, like when you have all these, uh, these students and these young guys, like, and you're trying to hook them up with careers and jobs, how many of them are looking to do their own thing versus hop on with someone else and and work for someone? That's a really good question. Now that I think about it, almost none. Most people come to us because they want to do their own job. But very rarely, very rarely do they come to us looking to start their own thing. And of course, I mean, Jonathan and I are still trying to figure things out and we're scrappy and we're structured and we're everything in between. But the people that we help typically are just looking for jobs. And what's, what's really interesting about that is as a result of our work on LinkedIn, we've began to see a lot of other organizations and people start their similar type of model. Um, So I think in that way, we've almost inspired uh, this next generation of people who also want to share their insights. Uh, So that's been really interesting for us to realize, but I think directly, very minimally. You said next generation as in passing on the knowledge between generations. Yeah, I, I think that because I think we've almost started a wave of well, being interested in careers isn't something that only people who take life way too seriously do, right. or people who just spend all their time thinking about workaholics, right? I, I, I think we're slowly beginning to debunk that myth because at the end of the day, LinkedIn is a community and the people on LinkedIn are supportive and kind. And the more that we can help people feel like they're, they're part of that community helps them also understand, well, how can I accelerate myself in my career? And hopefully will help them become almost ambassadors in their circles to help others do the same. So that's how I I think about it. The chain reaction of helping each other, right? That's right. It's a networking effect. I love seeing you guys pass on your wisdom and knowledge, just things you've picked up from both of you being like connection gurus. I kind of, (laughs) I see myself as that in a little bit. I've I've been uh, cultivating the skill a lot shorter yeah. time frame but i love bringing people together who have knowledge or who need knowledge and being like oh yeah the puzzle fits right there that's right yeah. yes and they say that networking is not about how many connections you have but how many connections you help others make exactly you can have yeah. thousands and thousands of followers and not do anything with them that's exactly right yeah. I, I agree awesome so you guys have a discord community too right we just launched discord community yeah. we're we did like a soft launch right now. We, we didn't do a huge push because we want to still figure out the kinks of what's the right level of engagement. How do we want to help people? How do we want to structure it? But yeah, we, 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 we launched our Discord. 
Congrats. Yeah, we uh, we have the Vortex. I was talking to Jonathan. We should connect the two, get some, yeah. some events going on. I think he's going to come to that. our masterminds on Friday and try to do Among Us with the guys. <laughs> I love it. Jonathan is such a big fan of Among Us. It's actually so funny. Oh, my wife got me addicted to that game. It's Sad. a good game. <laughs> I have no game. time to waste, man. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It feels like I'm just constantly going. I hear you. I hear you on that. <laughs> so um, you said that being a co-founder with uh, Jonathan was like having a girlfriend that you wish you mm. never had. Go into a little more detail on like the dynamics of your friendship and how that's developed. Yeah, I mean, I, I say that in the best possible way because... <laughs> Jonathan, I always tell Jonathan this, that like, he's my worst and best supporter because he'll, he'll always roast me online, but like secretly he's, he's like my biggest advocate. He always talks me up to partners and people that he, that we always talk to. So, uh, he's one of my best buddies, but I think Jonathan to me is someone who communicates a ton and I love communicating. And so that in, in that way, some people might look at that and be like, they might look at our messages and be like, Oh my God, this guy just keeps messaging you. Like, stop right but for me i appreciate that because i'd rather be over communicated to rather than under yeah because of so many reasons mm -hmm. and so i think in that way that's how i feel about it it's funny because hmm. uh jonathan i'm pretty sure jonathan and i message more than my girlfriend and i do which is the funniest <laughs> yeah. thing <laughs> so that, that, that's how i that, that's that's why i say that yeah no i got you there i think open communication um, between partners, like you said, is is vital uh, to that relationship developing. You're like family. That's and right. I think a lot of people uh, struggle with that in the beginning with partners uh, and finding that that flow, that dynamic of working together. Like for me, obviously, I, I love having I love having a partner. We're, we're starting to found a business together and I might oh, move wow. up to Pennsylvania to work on this. But uh, it's been like essentially dating or courting. You know, <laughs> it's really weird. It's a weird, it's a weird interaction, but yeah. um, the closer you get, the better, the better you work together. That, that's right. You let and I, think, I think there's like this tendency to separate work and, and, and um, you know, the rest of your life, but I don't know. What do you, what do you find? Is there really a distinction? Uh, no, I think because for me, I, because work takes up so much time, I find it that I'd rather be, if work is going to take a lot of time, that's a variable that we can't change. And I'd rather do it with people that I actually would want to be friends with because then it never feels like you're working. It just feels like you're hanging out and just trying to solve puzzles all day. Yeah. And for me and Jonathan, I think we strike that strike a balance where we respect each other's boundaries, where if I'm like, Hey, like, I just don't feel good today. Like, I just don't, don't think I can grind for a couple, couple days. Like, perfect. I'll, I'll handle it. And similarly, if Jonathan goes on vacation or something, like I'll handle it. Like, don't worry about it, yeah. you know? And so we, we almost have this dynamic where we have the, the right level, the, the optimal level of trust, where I don't have to question a decision that Jonathan made similar for, similarly for him to me, because I think we both know that our hearts and, and, and minds are in the right place. And we're trying to do what's best for the business. And even if something were to go wrong, we're rarely the type to go oh my gosh that's all your fault our instinct is always go okay perfect well how do how do we how do we get get out from this how do we how do we improvise how do we how do we fix this so uh i think having a founder or a co-founder or someone that you're even just working with on a side hobby having someone like that is so so important because it's so easy to work with someone when things are good but it's yeah. so tough when to work with someone when things are bad and i think finding the people who you know that thrive or that that you that you thrive in especially when things hit rock bottom those are the kind of people that you want to be surrounding yourself with yeah you kind of got to see how they operate when they hit rock bottom right that's right exactly right yeah if you haven't seen that if you only seen how they function in, in the good situations when things are smoothly flowing yeah that's that's risky you said uh do you play video games? You said you play mobile games, but do you play like PC games at all? Yeah, I uh, play I League of Legends. To, not so much. Uh, you're gonna shame me if you play League of Legends, <laughs> uh, but I play this game called Mobile Legends. It's pretty much League oh, of Legends for your phone. That got my friend as well. 
I, but it's so easy to play. It's so good. It it scratches my MOBA, yeah. I guess. Itch. Scra- itches. <laughs> but I... The MOBA craves. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Uh, I love playing strategy games. And uh, so growing up, I would play a ton of like StarCraft, Dota. I played Dota 2 for a while. I played StarCraft 2 for a while. And then I took a little bit of a break when I went to college. And then once I started working again, I started playing mobile games because it was just so easy for me to hop on and hop off. Yeah. So how do you like keep yourself from overspending time on there? Do you have an app or something that tells you to hop off? No, I think I naturally just... Naturally just, self-disciplined. Yeah, I don't know. It's just, I just, because I, I remember I used to be able to play for like 10 hours straight yeah. and not feeling like a single thing has gone wrong in my day but now <laughs> now it very much just becomes like all I can the play days for, yeah <laughs> i could play for an hour maybe an hour and a half and after that i just kind of yeah. get fried and i just want to chill so my days um, of competitive gaming are over yeah were you a competitive gamer <laughs> i was for a while i did a competitive rocket league but well actually i mostly shout casted i wasn't as good as some of the guys i was playing with but i played with like grand champs and and whatnot I shout casted a few solo 1v1s that's awesome wow yeah. so i'm talking to this is a little celebrity here uh well i mean it was it was part of my twitch stream but it wasn't nearly as big as what you guys go <laughs> like, <laughs> it's dwarfed you know yeah it was like a small group of uh outcasts and uh random people i think that um i thrive in that kind of situation where it's a bunch of people came from non-traditional backgrounds or you know aren't or kind of people who society has let slip to the slip into the cracks and then i have a tendency to pick them all up and put them together and i love doing that man yeah i love that love, that's love what my that. stream became it was like a bunch of people watching it and laughing at me just like blunder my way through games <laughs> <laughs> but now like it's come in handy i i have the podcast and like people listen to it and then they talk about it and i'm like that's great you know they're connecting over it and then you see people making those those connections I love that. I love yeah. that. It's so cool. Yeah. Cool. Well, man, uh, I appreciate you coming in and, and sharing a little bit about your story today. Yeah, man. Yeah, it was such a such a fun time talking with you. We talked from one salting to entrepreneurship to gaming to Mobile Legends. I love it. <laughs> All over the board here. I mean, That's I right. love what you guys are doing. I love the whole community and the, the underdogs to winners. I think... The world needs more of the the Jerry's and Jonathan's. Love it. I, I also yeah. love where Juan Salting came from. The name I called him out on it. I was like, "Is that was it? A, was it Wonton and, and Consulting put together?" Yeah, <laughs> that's what I thought too. But he always, like he always says, if if you did winning and consulting, but if you did win salting, then people would yeah. think that's W insulting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Well. Yeah, where can people go to check out uh, your personal information? Yeah, uh, personal information. You can find me on LinkedIn, linkedin.com slash IN slash slash J-E-H-A-K, Jerry Lee slash. So reach me on LinkedIn. Yeah, I'll also have the link in the description. And we will catch you guys next time in orbit. Thanks again, Jerry. Thank you, Sam. Appreciate having me.